I just wanted to give a quick um, overview of what the course is going to entail uh, over the next uh, 10 weeks or so. So in week one, as you expect, uh, we really look at um, the basics of climate change in terms of the climate change science. So the first lecture is on introduction to climate change, and we go through the basics of how an increase in greenhouse gases is intercepting more heat radiation from the Earth and so causing enhanced global warming. The following lecture uh, really looks at attribution of climate change. We know that natural drivers of climate are important, like solar activity and volcanoes. Um, so how can we attribute changes in climate that we see to natural drivers compared to human drivers, like our uh, emissions of greenhouse gases? Then we move into week two, and we really start looking there at reconstructing climate. So if we look back in human history and beyond human history, back hundreds of thousands of years, how has climate changed in the past and what have been the drivers for that? And what tools can we use, like ice core records or tree rings, to reconstruct that past climate and give us a real handle on how climate has changed in the past and so how it might change in the future? Also in week two, we look at uh, climate change feedbacks and interactions. So these are key things in terms of processes where if the climate changes, do its impacts reinforce the warming effect or hold it back? So whether there are positive feedbacks, like the fact we'll have less snow and ice in this warming world, and so will that cause extra warming and enhancement positive feedback? Or will there be negative feedbacks, like the trees growing better in a higher carbon dioxide atmosphere, and so basically counteracting some of the uh, climate change effect. At that point, in terms of week two, we'll then discuss the first assignment <coughs> for this course, which is an essay about climate change scepticism. So the idea is you will take an argument uh, that you found uh, through your reading, through internet searches, uh, basically which takes the case of climate change either not happening or it not being due to any human influence. Uh, you will have a look at the argument, look at the scientific basis for it, and then look at what counter-arguments exist to that argument. What I want you to do in your essay is examine the skeptic's argument, the counter-argument, and then for the final third of your essay discuss which you think holds the most water, where you think the gaps in the research are, where the evidence is strongest. So that will be the first assignment, a thousand word essay. Then we might move into week three. So at the beginning of week three, we're looking at the international development angle of climate change. We're really looking at how important the impacts of climate change are on the aims of international development. This key question of how we bring people out of poverty without increasing greenhouse gas emissions, a real, real crux in terms of balancing these pressures of international development and climate change in the 21st century. The second lecture in that week, uh, week three, uh, is really a review to look back at what we've learned in terms of the first section of the course, the fundamentals of the climate science, the various arguments uh, around climate change and its construction past climate. In week four, then we start to focus on the projected impacts of climate change. We look at global and regional climate change impacts in the first lecture of week four, really focusing on the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change uh, assessment of the impacts of climate change. So we look at the big global effects that we can expect in terms of warming and changes in precipitation, but also on continental scales, what can be expected. Following on from that, we then go into a lecture looking at adaptation at that regional scale. So if we've got a real change in precipitation, say so lower rainfall, how can agriculture, energy production, water supply uh, be better adapted for a future where water uh, is going to become more a harder resource to get hold of? At the end of that week, we'll then set the, um, the video impact assessment. So this is an assessment completely down to you and your cameras. So what I want you to do is either take your hometown or somewhere that you're working in now and produce a short video, something uh, a maximum of about 10 minutes, where you give an overview of how vulnerable you see that town or that location 
is the climate change, uh, the kind of factors that need to be considered, the kind of the climate background, where you are in the world, but what you um, would expect to be uh, key vulnerabilities for that area. So that will be uh, an up to 10 minute video. Then we move into week five, and there we're focusing down on some of the, the national um, evidence for, for uh, climate change impacts and some of the, the good kind of strategies for response. So we use uh, the UK and Scotland as an example when we look at the, uh, the impacts um, and adaptation uh, that have been assessed for the UK and Scotland. And as part of that, move into looking at the UK Climate Impacts Programme. So this is a programme uh, based in the UK, which is, I think, a, a good model for assessing the impacts of climate change and coming up with strategies for adaptation pretty much anywhere in the world, but use the UK as an example. So we'll go through uh, the various projections for the UK and how they can be used. Following on from that, when we get into week six, it's really, again, using the UK Impacts Programme, uh, but looking at the tools that can be used, whether you're a business or a local authority, and you're faced with some projections of climate change, what do you do? How do you actually incorporate those into your decision making, your risk analysis? So we'll look at those kind of tools. And then related to that um, is the next formative assessment, which uh, I hope you will enjoy. This is in a, um, a platform called Labyrinth. So it's basically a role playing game, but you are going to be the decision maker. So you'll take on the role of either a classroom teacher, um, a head teacher, or a director of education. This is for uh, schools in the south of England who are faced with a projection of heat waves in the future. So you, the, the worry is that your students and your staff will be at increased risk of heat stress and the impacts of that heat wave. What do you do? So the Hothouse Schools uh, role play allows you to go through this scenario and make the decisions and see what kind of outcomes uh, arise. But the key thing I'm looking for with that component is for you to try out different scenarios, but then let's discuss on the message board alternative uh, strategies that you might use in your situation that would give a better result, make the, the school more resilient, protect the children, protect the staff more effective. Going into week seven, then we're really looking at um, a specific aspect of how we can increase resilience in um, natural ecosystems and in agriculture. This is really looking at seed conservation and uh, seed banks. So the way that we can collect seeds and are collecting seeds from around the world from various plant species, which can then be reintroduced to areas where they've got um, varieties which say more drought resistant. Can we provide these crop types uh, to, to farmers around the world so that they are more resilient in the face of climate change? As part of that week, we'll also look at climate change models. So we talk about projected climate change a lot, and we talk about the impacts that are expected, but how do we model them? How do we actually come up with these projections, and how useful are they uh, in terms of informing the actions we take, whether it's national policy or strategy at a local level? So we'll discuss that uh, in week seven. Also in week seven, we'll set the final assessment, which is um, a report of up to 3,000 words this time, adaptation assessment where you take your, your specialist subject. It might be your sector, it might be your business, it might be a region that you know really well, where you do a thorough adaptation assessment of what is required based on the projected climate change in that area to make it more resilient uh, based on the stuff we've learned in the initial two thirds of the course. Then to the final section of the course, uh, in week eight we look at I suppose the sweet spot of climate change management, which is where we can use adaptation, we can increase resilience to climate change, but at the same time cut emissions. So there are various sectors like the built environment, land use and energy, where there are great opportunities here to not just increase resilience, but reduce greenhouse gas emissions at the same time. So we'll look at these win-wins uh, in that lecture. Then we'll look at the, the legal aspects of climate change. So in, particularly, in particular, the issue of how adaptation can be constrained by law and intellectual property and where we've got, like we discussed, for the Millennium Seed Bank. Say we've got a 
um, a crop variety that we know is drought resistant, it'll grow really well in an area which we know is going to become more drought prone, but someone owns the, the right to that cultivar, to that type of crop, and so it can't be easily given to the farmers who need it. How do we address those issues? How important is that in, in, as a barrier to effective adaptation? Into week nine, uh, there we really discuss some of the, the issues which have arisen throughout the course, which are how do we communicate climate change? It's part of our job um, day in, day out to, to communicate what we do and hopefully do it effectively. But climate change is a complex issue. There are lots of vested interests on, on the different sides of the debate in terms of what's done. And we need to be good at conversing, not just in the, the science, but in the business, in the economics, in the policy of climate change. So we'll discuss some of the ways um, we can become more effective at that. Finally, in week nine, we'll look back at the course overall, review the lectures, look at the key learning outcomes I want you to have taken away over um, the course, uh, and obviously discuss any outstanding issues we have. Finally, and as part of um, that, that final week of study, um, there'll be a, a, a summative, no, not summative, formative test, a, a multiple choice um, exam for you to go through and test your knowledge. You can do it as many times as you like um, until you get all the questions right. But it's really picking out a lot of the key questions which you, um, you'll be asked about climate change so that uh, you can show that you, you know the basics um, of the course, but obviously the other assessments will give the real the real depth to that. So that's the course in a nutshell. Um, I'm really looking forward to uh, working with you all on it, and uh, I'll see you soon. Um, have a good Christmas, and bye for now.